Shalom, friends. Robert Gotzlick here from the Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry. The last time we were looking at Zechariah chapter 12, we were looking at the second burden of the word of the Lord. Of course, the first burden we know uh, came in chapter 9 as it was depicting a time uh, in the future from Zechariah's time to the time of Alexander the Great. And here when we come to the 12th chapter uh, in the book of Zechariah, we see that the second burden of the word of the Lord is in regards to Jerusalem. And we see that Jerusalem is, is there's this, is, it, it's this cup of trembling before the whole world. And all the nations are going to come and drink of this cup of trembling, just like a drunk man. And they are going to come against Jerusalem and they are going to be intoxicated with power and to do so. But God says that Jerusalem will be a burdensome stone. Oh, this second burden of the word of the Lord is indeed heavy. It's so heavy. Uh, this sharp stone that it says that anybody that comes, any nation that comes to try to move this immovable, burdensome stone, will be cut in pieces. And so woe unto the nations today that are sticking their nose in the affairs of God without understanding what his word says. Woe unto them. Because Joel 3, 2, we've talked about many, many times. In Zechariah 14, we're going to see when we get there that he's gathering all the nations to battle one day. He's going to gather them all to battle one day. And we see that Antichrist, uh, possessed by Satan, is going to also bring these nations into that valley of Jehoshaphat as God's gathering them there. And he's going to enter into judgment with them there for scattering his people and dividing his land. And all of Israel's enemies are going to be destroyed. Friends, it's an amazing time that's going to happen at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble here. But when we come into the 10th verse of chapter 12, which we're going to do today, and like always, you're going to want to grab your Bibles and turn with me there. Um, we're going to see here that when the Lord does return, we're going to see here this spiritual regeneration of nation Israel that Paul talks about in the 11th chapter where he says, all Israel will be saved. That one third remnant that Zechariah mentions in the 13th chapter here. This is what it's speaking of here. And so I'm going to begin by reading verse 10. So Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications. Friends, you're seeing right here in these pages of scripture, looking to the time at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, you're seeing the spiritual regeneration of nation Israel as a whole. As I mentioned, that one third remnant spoken in the 13th chapter here. And friends, you're seeing that new covenant promise happen there at that time. And it's found here in Jeremiah 31. And I'm going to read it for you here. Jeremiah 31, verse 31, God says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob. He says, not according to the old covenant. That's the old covenant, the Mosaic covenant, 613 laws. He says, not according to that covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. This is the new covenant promise that was promised to Israel. But listen to this church. This is the promise that we've been grafted into, Paul tells us in Romans 11. You see, as believers, when we put our faith and trust in, in, in Jesus and Yeshua, and we repent of our sins and we turn to him and put our faith and trust in him and him alone, this new covenant promise that was promised to Israel that we've been grafted into, this is what happens to us. God's spirit comes on the inside of us. He changes us. He changes us. He is our God. We are his people. But for nation Israel as a whole today, we don't see that happening today, do we, friends? Well, we see Jewish people that have come to faith, trust in Messiah Jesus. They're part of the church as you and I are. But for nation Israel as a whole, that spiritual regeneration doesn't happen until the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. When the nations are coming to destroy God's people and nation Israel as a whole repents to the Lord and he comes, he pours his spirit upon them. And when they look at him whom they've pierced, as we're going to read here, 
they mourn for him. Let's continue reading here, friends, because that's exactly what it says. It says, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. They're going to look upon the one whom they've pierced. Who is that? It's Yeshua. It's Jesus. That was partially fulfilled in John chapter 19 here, but it's fulfillment is here when the remnant look at him, that remnant of nation Israel, as they've been spiritually regenerated and as Jesus comes back and they look upon him whom they've pierced. If you have any other doubts that that's not speaking of the Messiah here, I just want you to take a take note here of the word at, and they shall look upon me. And in the Hebrew, right after me, it says, has the Hebrew word at in there. And that word et is made up of two letters, the Aleph and the Tuf. That's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Does that sound familiar? Students of the Bible, does that sound familiar? Yes, because Jesus, what did he say? He said in the New Testament, I am Alpha and Omega. That's the first letter of the Greek alphabet and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. But here in the Hebrew alphabet, it's the Aleph and the Tav. And so he's saying here, and they shall look upon me, the Aleph and the Tav, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Wow. Friends, you can also read that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, where it says, in the beginning created God. Bereshit, bara, Elohim, et. That word et is there. We're told that <laughs> the creator is Jesus and that he's going to come on this world here. And we don't have time to go into that. But when you break down, you're going to see a son, a man, and a cross in the very first verse of our Bible. It's, it's incredible, friends. And so we see, we see this word et here. It's like God's initials all throughout the Old Testament. You're going to see this word et here. And in the 10th verse, it says, and they shall look upon me, the Aleph and the Tav whom they have pierced. Friends, I don't know about you, but when I came to faith in the Lord, and some come at a very young age, uh, some of us that have come in a latter age, I remember being on my knees, crying out to the Lord to save me, a wretched sinner, and it brought tears in my eyes when I looked at him who, who died for my sins, who was pierced. And yet, you know, when you look at Isaiah 53, it says, by his knowledge, he shall justify many. You know, he knew every one of my sins, past, present, future, and he died for me. And that broke my heart and drove me to repentance. And this is what you're reading about here. You're reading about nation Israel as a whole coming to repentance. And it says that they will mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And look at verse 11. In that day, there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the mourning of Hadarimon and in the valley of Megiddo. And the land that shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart and their wives apart, the families of Shimei apart and their wives apart. All the families that remain, every family apart. See, all the families that remain, that's that, that's that remnant. That's that remnant in Zechariah 13. And when Paul understood that, he wrote in Romans 11 that one day all Israel will be saved. This is it. This is it, friends. And it's going to come through a time of great distress. You know, when you look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 30 here, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It says, alas, for the day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he will be saved out of it. Two-thirds of the Jewish people will perish in that time. Two-thirds, friends. Does that break your heart? It breaks mine. We ought to be a comfort to the Jewish people today. We need to love the Jewish people today. We've been grafted in because of the rejection of Messiah Jesus. We owe them a great debt of thanks. Oh, friends, reach out to your Jewish people with love. Pray God will give you an opportunity to share further if, 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 the, if the conversation goes. You know, pray that God gives us those opportunities. And so they through a time of great distress. You know, I think of you and I sometimes, you know, as I mentioned, as we come to the faith in the Lord later on in our life here, I look at my situation in my life. Uh, there were things that went on in my life that was a time of distress. And through those times of distress, often that's what it takes to bring people to know him. Of course, when, when Jesus came on, on the world scene 2,000 years ago uh, as Israel's Messiah and offered the kingdom, they rejected that offer. You know, that didn't bring them to repentance and faith in their Messiah. I look at uh, the, the time of the Romans in between 70 and 135 AD. That didn't bring nation Israel to repentance in their Messiah. The Holocaust didn't, as horrific as that was. 
It's going to take, sadly, to the time of the end of Jacob's trouble for that to happen. And here we see this remnant that God saves, and he saves them physically and spiritually. Friends, do you know the Lord? Have you put your faith and trust in, in, in Jesus? Is his spirit dwelling on in the inside of you? It's true for Israel, the Jewish people, as it is for the Gentiles. There's only salvation. There's only one name given under, under heaven that we might be saved, right? It's, it's Jesus. It's through him. And it's as simple as the ABCs. A, admit you're a sinner. That means you're going you're gonna to do a 180. You're going to repent of your sin and go in the other direction and ask for forgiveness of that. And the B is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, you, you know, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that God raised him from the dead, you would be saved. And then the C is you confess that with your mouth. You confess that with your mouth. Because with the heart one believeth unto righteousness, but confession is made unto salvation. And that's Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 10. And then the 13th verse, you know, it seals the deal. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And just as Jesus said in Matthew 23, Jesus said in Matthew 23, he says that, uh, to, speaking to the leaders, he says, you shall not see me henceforth uh, until you say, blessed is he that, that comes in the name of the Lord. And that's what happens at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble with the Jewish people. And that's what happens to you and I. When we say, blessed be the name of the Lord, Lord, come and live on the inside of me, we're saved. And so, friend, these, these are, uh, this is a time that I'm looking forward to within nation Israel. I love the, the, the nation Israel. I love the Jewish people, and I'm praying for them, and I entrust that you are too. And so this is all the time we have for today. The next time we're going to be getting into chapter 13. And until that time, friends, shalom and God bless.